Weddings have always been about opulence and spectacles, and brides are in no mood to sacrifice that wow element of their attire. Be it conventional or be it experimental, every bride wants to look their best on the big day. The question is, how does one do that? Well, we've got you covered. I'm Aaron Lingdo. Welcome to Shalong Buzz. Gracing this edition of the show is the founder and creative head at Kaizen Couture, an avid traveller and a proud believer in infinite possibilities. She's no stranger to the world of fashion and style and her sense of freedom to not conform has opened doors to winds of change. Presenting the ambitious Abigail Kaizun Pame. Hi Aaron, welcome to Kaizen Couture. Thank you so much for having me here, Abigail. Thank you for having me as well. <laughs> this is your new store. What is what are in fact some of the upgrades that you've incorporated from your old store and getting them here? The best thing and the thing that you just cannot um, fabricate is sunlight. So I love this space. My previous space had sunlight as well, but look at the windows here. I can see that, yes. Lots of natural light. You can kind of have the bride envision what she will look like on the day of the wedding. So that was the number one selling point for me. Of course, there's the location, the proximity. I, you know, would like it to be easy for everyone to get here. So being in the heart of the city, it, it's a dream. Very wise decision. <laughs> you know, the most daunting task is to help a bride find that perfect dress. Brides take, you know, months and months deciding on that perfect dress and you went down that road. Why take that risk in the first place? Listen, finding what you want is a joyful moment mm -hmm. and to get to play a role in that it's a blessing. Like it's really it, you get to see the joy in their faces and you have facilitated that's quite a dream. I love a challenge. Mm. So even though it's extremely challenging, sometimes it's some brides who are not sure what they want, I'm up for it. So what's the most challenging bit about what you do? I'm sure nothing is a cakewalk. What's the most challenging bit, Abigail? I think, uh, you know, now with Pinterest and a lot of these online um, social media places where you can get a lot of inspiration from, right. I, some of my brides find it hard to insert themselves in, in, that, in that scene. So mm. you have like someone who has a lot of pictures of what they think they want. However, does it suit them? Will it work with the venue? All of that is there. So that, that's kind of hard convincing the bride to have an open mind. Yeah. Right. I'm sure you've just opened the space, but you must have that favorite spot around here. What's the favorite spot in here? As much as I love standing and hosting my brides, dressing them, I love to sit. Oh, so right. my favorite part is this sunny area where there's a couch, I get to sit, have a think, sometimes chat with my brides with, so it's my favorite spot, yeah. Well, we will hit the couch in a bit, but I can see something behind you, a lot of sequin dresses. Tell us a little bit about all of this. So this section is called Evening mm -hmm. by Kaizen Couture. And basically, I've just fallen under the pressure of my bride's family. So the sisters, the mother of the bride, they love, they love to dress as well. And you know, they're like, what about us? So I've decided to curate beaded gowns, uh, simpler gowns, a whole variety um, in order to cater to them. Yeah. Right, so how has the response been so far though, Abigail? It's been great. I mean, th they should be excited as well, mm -hmm. you know, for them to glam up for the night. So sure. it's been really good. The evening gowns are a huge seller. All the glitz and glamour. Absolutely. I think it's time for us to hit the yeah, couch sure, and let's show go. all our viewers that favorite <laughs> spot. <laughs> yeah, sure. Abigail, this is indeed the infamous couch that we're talking about, isn't it? Super comfortable, <laughs> love it. I can feel it already. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. If you look at how brides operated earlier, mm. you know, it was very centric on what their mother's favorite shop was. So mm. all of them would throng to that shop and get their wedding dress from that shop. But post social media flooding with so much of content and your wedding photography taking such a big turn, how do you help brides shop smartly? See, it's, it's easy to get lost in, in everything that you see online. I want this, I want that. In the end, you get a lot, you become confused because there's so much stimulation, right? right? And so many ideas. So it's important for the bride to ask themselves, who am I? 
well, what, what, who am I? Do I want comfort? Am I glam? Do I like simplicity? Because on the wedding day, it should just be an elevated version of yourself. True. You should continue to be yourself throughout. I think um, over the process of finding the dress, you'll start to realize, you'll start to discover actually what are my tastes like. Um, of course, mums are there, mother-in-laws are there. They say, take this, take that. When I would, my Everybody time, I did this. Everybody have an opinion for sure. Yes, but I think a lot of, like, even the, the, the mums, they, they, they're in with the times. They understand that things have changed, styles have changed. We don't have to do traditional lace mm. all the time, right. even though there's beauty in classics. So I think it's important to remind the bride, just take a bit of time to figure out what, what they love for themselves rather than what they just see online. True. Speaking of brides, what is that quintessential Kaizen bride? I want to hear it from you. The quintessential Kaizen bride, that's, uh, uh, it, that's a difficult question. Um, to me, my favorite kind of bride would be someone who knows who they are someone who um, has a very clear vision of what they want for the wedding but right. on top of all they prioritize their comfort they prioritize themselves because it's i get brides who get lost in pleasing True. everyone mm. and when it's like that you become a little inconsistent with your criteria for the dress so i love a bride that decides like this is what i want True. i'm doing this but you'll rarely find such a bride so you know for example somebody would want something conventional some somebody would want something you know experimental yeah how do you blend in those two ideas and you know tread that middle path so easy you mm. can do a morning dress right. which can be the traditional more conventional traditional lace you get a, a big gown for example that would look perfect in the church right. and in the evening you can switch it up get another dress a reception dress where you can be a little more modern free to dance in so it's it's win-win for everyone all of that in what budget um that's that <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll tell you later <laughs> right, we'll talk about it you know, when we're not in front of the camera so you know abigail entrepreneurship is a journey that requires so much of self-discipline among all other things what inspires you every day when you wake up in the morning? What drives you to come to work? I think for me, my upbringing has been very important. Uh, we're quite an ambitious family, so I've always had ambition within me. But more than anything, rather than compete with other other stores or you know other places, I try to challenge myself to kind of sure. surpass myself. So how was I last year? How I, how can I be much better now? What am I? What couldn't I do then? What can I do now? So I think continually kind of assessing yourself and recalibrating accordingly that's the best way because then you surpass yourself each time right so your biggest competition is yourself yeah sure. yeah now i want you to talk to us a little bit because when you know when brides step into a space like mm -hmm. this all they want is a lot of guidance mm -hmm. i want you to walk us through the top bridal wear trends 2023 okay um in recent times okay because of the pandemic people have gone in two separate directions we have the bride that is like let's go for it let's okay. go big or go home mm -hmm. because you know you missed out on a lot during the pandemic life mm -hmm. got a bit dull so let's switch it up and then you have the bride that's kind of like gotten used to comfort so they go they want a little uh. a breezy something easy to wear so in in the full glam arena we have the mermaid okay. with the detachable train so it's a two-in-one dress where you have the the big volume of the ball gown but then when you're tired of it you remove the skirt and you have a slinky little mermaid in the middle Makes in sense. in on the inside yeah so that has been a rising trend now because some of our brides, they want it all. They okay. want the full glam, but they mm. also want the ease and comfort in the evening. And on the other direction of, of comfort and just taking it easy, continuing with the work from home, kind of chill out pandemic vibe, um, we have the effortless A-line. Okay. So What's that's a gown. So an A-line is like much lighter because they're usually very soft and flowy and easy to walk in and you can swish and turn and it, it's not too much to handle on mm. the big day. So those are the two rising trends, a nice flowy A-line, a light maybe organza material and then we have the big glam two-in-one mermaid with detachable train i hope you guys are taking some <laughs> notes right here <laughs> Abigail. you know what you have done this is not your first business per se mm -hmm. you know, i want to walk us through a little bit about what you've done before up to this very moment 
Uh, well, previously to this, I have graduated as an engineer, as you know that. So I come from a very technical background, and I've worked in like the corporate world and in also in in arenas where we do uh, events and all right. of that. That gave me a lot of discipline sure. and sort of drive to better myself within the controlled environment. Right. However, since I moved back to Shillong, I. I I love business. I see a lot of opportunity around here. So I ventured into food. I had uh, a nice healthy food bar that is being reinvented. Mm. Uh, it's coming again. It's okay. coming soon, so stay tuned. Perfect, yes. <laughs> but other than that, I, I've always had a, this love for fashion. So mm. this was an easy decision. So you've always decision. had an incl inclination towards fashion and you know, this comes naturally to you. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of businesses, mm -hmm. all right, how easy or how difficult is it to start one on your own, first of all, and how do you maneuver through success, especially Mm -hmm. as a woman in a so-called man's world okay with business i think it's good to be realistic you need to know what you have in your hand and what you could have so it's okay to start small i know there's a lot of pressure and when you look at social media and you, or you look at people who are quite well established brands that are well established you can feel very intimidated looking at the big picture but understand that things everyone starts small so it's okay to start with a certain size and then expand as you as you grow that way it, the business grows along with you so I, I encourage people to just take the step start it out have some good uh, supporters behind you so that you're not you know just running off in some weird direction mm -hmm. um, but at the same time be bold enough don't compare yourself too much because comparison can really cripple you um, start small and build from that but be bold be bold what's the worst that could happen you might fail but you learn from it so it's okay you take some risk in life and that's when <laughs> you succeed right yeah. Abigail? well the irony in here Abigail is the fact that you know it's not an all-white affair I can see you in black <laughs> why did you get into bridal when your favorite color is black talk to us Listen, life is always fun on the other side as well. So mm. it's it's nice to live a little dangerously with things that you're not too familiar with. Mm. Yeah. And I want you to clear the air for us once and for all because mm -hmm. you know when we talk about weddings, it's not just white in itself. We've got other colors as well. Like what I see here is a little bit of creamish, if mm -hmm. you will. So there's definitely a spectrum of white when it comes to bridal wear. And as you can see in front of us, we have some ivory, we have some blush, we have some skin color, some champagne. Mm -hmm. All of these count as bridal wear. I know that there's a bit of taboo with wearing a little bit of color other than white, when it, especially in Shillong when it comes to weddings, but there's a lot to understand about it. So for example, the skin mesh gets a bad rap because a lot of people think, oh my God, this is not white, right. I can't wear it. But really, it's meant to blend with your skin. So when you wear something like this that has a skin mesh in it, the mesh is almost invisible and you just have these crystals floating on your body right. and it looks completely white because the crystals are white. Mm. So this is a beautiful sort of like modern bride uh, choice because you have this this dance of, of sequins and glitter on your body and it's it's so beautiful. So I encourage my brides not to shy away from just try just try it on. Once it's in your body you'll understand. Right, talk to us a little bit about the fabric in Shillong. I mm -hmm. mean, I, I don't know what works best for women here. Suggest. I mean, to each their own, like uh, a different bride will have different mm. choices based on who they are and mm. their preferences. Mm. There are lots and lots of materials you can play with when it comes to bridal fashion. We have the Mikado satin, which is a high quality satin that has a soft buttery finish. It has a nice little beautiful glow in it. Then we have a special curation, a Thai silk. Okay. This is almost like raw silk, but it's not so stiff. It's a beautiful, it always has like a little blush color. Gorgeous, because minimal brides, sometimes it can get a bit boring if you're just play, wearing just plain white. So you play with the shade a little bit. Mm. Then you have your typical beaded lace. Then you have your crystal bodice. And we have also like custom orders where we can include a little bit of gold and silver beading. So different shapes, different hues, different textures. There's so much fun. Abigail, I won't ask you about your favorite dress in here because I feel that would be very <laughs> unfair. But we can talk a little bit about some of your top sellers. Our top seller are our super ball gowns. So this is a ball gown that is bigger than usual with a huge train, a huge skirt. It's so popular that we get a lot of custom orders as well and brides come up to a year in advance to make sure that they get the dress they want. So an example of it is this piece here. Super ball gowns because they're so big, 
they're heavy. So make sure you're hydrated, make sure you have the energy to carry the dress. That's a tip for the brides. Um, but something like this would be considered a super ball gown. Right. It is definitely glam, very big skirt, huge seller. Um, actually, my premium gowns, the ones that are big and large True. and very decadent, they're mm -hmm. the ones that sell the best. Speaking of big sellers, let me talk to you about the big seller of this season. I touched on it a little bit earlier, right. but here we have the mermaid with detachable train. Right. So this is a two-in-one gown. You get the mermaid, which is the slinky dress, and then you also have the big skirt, which kind of makes it like a ball gown as well. This one is beaded, it has lace, it has a slim number on the inside, and it has a big almost like ball gown skirt. So this is our huge seller this season and we've got a lot. So brides, hurry up, come and get your dress. Exactly. You know, however pretty these look, like people will be worried about how do we clean all of this? How does that work? Cleaning a wedding dress is, is quite tricky. So before the wedding, we always make sure that we clean it. We have our little secret ways of doing it. So I'm not going to share that all with right. you. However, post wedding, you can just take it to the dry cleaners. They're, they're pretty careful with the dresses. Yeah. Fair enough. You know, Abigail, a bride would not step out of a house until and unless you get everything for that perfect day. It's the perfect dress, the perfect makeup, shoes etc do we have all that in-house here at kaizen couture yes the one thing that's quite special about us is that we do full styling sometimes like you said it's an overwhelming decision there's so many elements the dress the makeup the hair the shoes the jewelry the tiara the veil so there's a lot of elements in them and so many of our brides you don't have much experience so they're not aware of everything that needs to go into the full look so here we provide full styling, so we look at you, we kind of assess what your personal style is and we can recommend what will suit you, what will suit your body, what will suit your vibe, what will suit your venue. So we offer everything here, we've got right. full accessories, the jewellery, the tiara, the veil, everything we provide here. Brilliant. The million dollar question. Uh, when, <laughs> okay not when, what is Abigail going to wear on her big day? Like I say, all brides have their own personal preferences. What's your style? What's your <laughs> personal style preference? My style is I'm very minimal so I probably go with something very effortless, fuss free, minimal. I've seen many weddings, I've seen many dresses so for me it's like maybe the, the, <laughs> the I know the technicalities with the big dresses so I go with simple and you have to stay tuned what I what I decide for that day. <laughs> All right, how many months would it take for you to decide? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I think because I'm always here, five minutes. <laughs> five minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Now, I think all the boys watching this right now would have the same question. When will you venture into menswear? Because why should girls have all the fun? That's true. Um, so I definitely support the dapper movement. I love it when the... Oh, I like the it the way you put it, the dapper movement. Yeah, yeah, it's a movement. And women, we have our opinions on how the men should look. So, never say never. Who knows, it might be there in the future. I've catered to the bridal party. Who knows, I might cater to the groom. Never say never. Yeah. All right, and Abigail, finally, before I let you go, what is that expert tip and advice that you'd like to give to all our brides dying the knot sooner or later? What's that expert tip that you'd like to give? Know what, who you are. Have a gauge of what your personal style is on the day when it comes to everything, styling, accessories, everything. It should just be an elevated version of you and who you are. And remember, your happiness is most important. What if somebody panics then? Just, uh, <laughs> just have a little panic room, scream and shout, come out, you're, you're going to be fresh. Yeah. And a glass of wine, that will solve all the problems. <laughs> That's true as well. Abigail, yeah. thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Like I said, enter this place. It felt ethereal. I still love it here and I wish you all the best of luck. I'm one of the lucky few to enter this place right when it just opened. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Aaron. You're always welcome to come and visit us anytime. Thank you. Thank you.
No matter what comes and goes, modern brides are not only looking for ways to showcase their personalities in their wedding attires, but the overall vibe of the ceremony. If you're getting married or know somebody who is going to tie the knot very soon, we reckon you don't waste time. Head over to Kaizun Couture to find that perfect dress for your big day. I'm Aaron Lingdor. This is Shalong Buzz. Until next time, goodbye.